And what a glorious day that's going to be. Um, my favorite line of any hymn we ever sing is just one glimpse of Him in glory will all the toils of life repay. Is that not a glorious, glorious thought? Turn with me to Acts 8. We'll study from there this morning. Think about the Ethiopian eunuch. It is good to be together and to see each of you. I haven't seen this brother in years and won't see him again until I'm with the Lord. When I went to International Bible College in Florence, Alabama, in the early 90s, the school was indeed international, and it lived up to its name. It was before 9-11. Student visas were easy to get, and many of our students hailed from foreign countries. There was one of those students who made a deep impact on my life. His name was Austin Vimba. He was a Zulu warrior from South Africa. And he would readily tell you he was a Zulu warrior who was now a soldier in the army of God. And he loved to tell that story. But Austin wanted to preach. And in order to preach the Word of God, Austin came to the States, left his family, wife, and children behind and came to Alabama for four years to study the Word of God. He didn't see his family during that entire time. And then Austin went back to South Africa, preached the Word, baptized countless folks, established numerous congregations did the Lord's work in a marvelous way. Austin has gone to his reward now. But I'll never forget that example of work, effort, dedication. I, I, I know without a doubt you've seen much the same thing. You've seen Bible class teachers spend hours in order to teach their children. You've seen folks spend hours in the kitchen preparing a meal for someone who's needy. You've seen folks go out of their way to serve and to help the love. In this morning's text, there is a man who goes out of his way to serve our God. And it's wise for us to stop and to think about his work and to understand what the eunuch teaches us. That serving Jesus requires effort. Serving Jesus requires effort. It's not simply that we're baptized into Jesus and we live on easy street. Serving the Lord requires effort. Now you know that we are saved by grace, not by works. And is that not a blessing? We can't work our way to heaven. We couldn't if we tried. We're sinful folks. But God, out of His rich mercy and grace, has saved us. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Not by works, so that no one can boast. 
You cannot, cannot earn your salvation. But at the same time, Jesus expects us to work in His vineyard, to do His will, to put forth effort to serve and to honor Him. Jesus says, Luke 14, 27, Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Whoever doesn't take up his cross, follow me, cannot be my disciple. Carrying a cross in the ancient world was work. That cross was heavy. It wasn't an easy task. And Jesus says, if you do not pick up your cross, follow me, you can't be my disciple. The Lord also said, Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does effort the will of my Father who is in heaven. It takes effort to know the will of God. It takes effort to do the will of God. Jesus calls upon us to put forth effort. And the Samaritan, rather the Ethiopian eunuch, the Samaritans are in this passage too of Acts 8, but we're thinking about the eunuch this morning. Acts 8, 26-40. Let's think about the example of the Ethiopian eunuch. How did the eunuch put forth effort to serve Jesus? He adored him. The eunuch adored Jesus. In other words, he worshipped him. Verse 26, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandaki, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home... <coughs> Ethiopia, what's called Ethiopia in this passage, south of modern Sudan, it was south of modern Ethiopia. And so this man had traveled a long, long way to Jerusalem to worship. And Luke points out that he is a eunuch. That was common for folks who worked around the queen, uh, keep her pure. They would castrate the men, and because of that, he could not fully participate in the worship at the temple. He had to stay away on the far outskirts of the worship. But guess what? He went to Jerusalem a long way from home, and he worshipped to put forth effort to serve Jesus, the eunuch absorbed him. Verses 28, the first part of verse 30. <coughs> Excuse me. The eunuch was on his way home, sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Here's a man reading Isaiah the prophet from a scroll. Now, now you've got to understand, 
In that day and age, there is no printing press. This is 1,500 years before Gutenberg. And so, to make a book, to make a scroll, people had to write that by hand. It took time. And because it took time and effort, it was expensive. Most people could not afford books or chariots or servants like this man had. He was wealthy, an important official in Kandaki's court. But yet I want you to notice something. He spent money on scripture. It was expensive. But yet he spent the money. And as he spent that money, he is studying the Word of God. He is seeking to absorb Jesus. <laughs> to put forth effort to serve Jesus, the eunuch accepted aid. Verses 29-34. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? Notice this. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This man is reading of the suffering servant, Isaiah 53. He doesn't understand the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. Instead of throwing his hands up in exasperation, he calls Philip up into the chariot so that he might understand the Word of God. He wasn't too proud to ask for help. He didn't understand the Word of God. And so he asked someone to help him. To put forth effort to follow Jesus. The eunuch abided by his teaching. Verses 35 to 38. Then Philip began with that very passive scripture, Isaiah 53. Philip began with that very passive scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Who can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. You see, the eunuch paid attention to what he had been taught. The eunuch obeyed what he had been taught. He abided in Jesus, he heard the word. He obeyed the word. Baptized according to the inspired word that Philip had given him. You see, this man put forth effort to serve Jesus. It takes effort to serve Jesus. If you want to serve Jesus, you're going to have to put forth effort. There's no two ways about it. You cannot, you cannot serve Jesus without effort. How do you put forth that effort to serve Jesus? In the first place, 
you need to adore Him. This eunuch went through a great deal to worship. He went through desert for hundreds and hundreds of miles to get to Jerusalem in a chariot, and then he couldn't fully worship. He couldn't go in the temple. He had to stay outside because he was a eunuch. But yet he went. He went through a great deal of trouble to get there. And then some folks can't get out of bed to be here on Sunday morning. And this man went through a great deal to worship. We need to be a people who worship. You know, we talk about sometimes that God commands that we worship. You know that is very, very true. Hebrews 10, 25. We must not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Don't give up meeting together as the habit of some is. It's the word of the Lord. Come together. Worship. Let me tell you something. I'm afraid, in a sense, we talk too much about the command to worship. It's there, it's Bible, it's truth. However, you know what else is Bible and truth and there? God deserves my worship. Why do I come on Sunday morning? Why do I get out of bed? Why do I get my cup of coffee earlier than I want and be here? God deserves it. God deserves for me to fall on my face before His throne in worship and adoration. In Revelation, he had a picture of God's worthiness for worship. Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For you created all things. And by your will they were created and have their being. About the Lamb, Revelation 5.12 Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Why do we worship? Yeah, we're commanded. But we need to understand how worthy God is of worship. You know what you do? You take the time to think about why in your life God is worthy. These texts both describe what God has done. You are worthy to receive worship, our Lord and God. Why? For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive honor, praise, and glory. Why? For you were slain. He died for us. Stop and think about in your life what God has done. Think about the grace upon grace upon grace that God gives you. Think about all those sins God has forgiven. 
Think about Jesus on that cruel cross suffering in agony for you. Think about all those blessings God gives and gives and gives. And then come and fall on your face in worship and say, worthy are you to receive my worship, my praise, my adoration. Put forth effort to serve Jesus. You've got to absorb Him. The eunuch was reading his scroll of the book of Isaiah. You need to spend time in the book. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to His apostles who in wrote this book under guidance of that Spirit. Luke and Mark and others who weren't apostles also received that gift and wrote. So what we have here is the Word of God. What Jesus wants us to know and to do and the effort He wants us to put forth. That Word will tell you how to serve Jesus. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalm 119.105 That word will bless your life. James 1.25 Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. That word will purify your life. 1 Peter 1, 22. You have purified yourselves by obeying the truth. Let's get real. Let's be honest. We need to spend time in the book. Serious time in the book. You know, if you can keep up with your favorite sports team, University of Kentucky Wildcats, if you did not know that, or that team up at College Station if you have to. Anyway, seriously, if I can keep up with my favorite sports team, if you can keep that car in perfect condition, you can watch your favorite show on TV, read your favorite novel, work in the garden, do whatever you want, keep up with all your hobbies. You can spend time in the Word of God. If we are so busy, we don't have time for the book, we are too busy. We need to know what God wants for us. We need to study and understand what God wants for us. And we need to spend time in the book. If you're going to put forth effort to serve Jesus, you need to ask. That eunuch reading Isaiah the prophet didn't understand that about the suffering servant. How is humiliation and the cross and all those things? And so as Philip comes up to the chariot, he asks for help. Some scriptures are hard to understand. Some are difficult to understand. Peter says as much. Paul's letters contain some things that are hard to understand. 2 Peter 3.16 And when you read the epistles of Paul, you understand how hard some of them can be. Try teaching them and preaching them. They're not easy to get. Peter says some scriptures are hard to understand. And when Ezra was reading the law of the Israelites after the captivity, some Levites were assembled And those Levites 
read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. You see, Ezra, Nehemiah, the Levites did not leave the people in the dark as they read the book of the law, but they gave the meaning and helped the people understand it. If you don't understand something about the Word of God, ask. There are folks who understand a great deal more than I do. May understand much more than you. It's wise when we don't understand to ask so that we can get Scripture, so that we can obey Scripture. You know, the only stupid question is the one you do not ask. We must be willing to ask, get help, understand the Word of God. Willing to put forth effort to serve Jesus, you must abide by the truth. In other words, you have to obey the Word of God. Obedience to Scripture is so important. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. John 14, 23. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him. And we will come to them and make our home with them. How much do you love Jesus? Do you love him as much as this unique did? Oh, I know he didn't know about Jesus at the beginning. But he loved God. He loved that Word of God. He loved that coming Messiah. I'll tell you that. I'm sure of it. And he obeyed. Are you willing to put forth the effort to serve Jesus? Are you willing to obey? If you need to come, just come right now. We stand seen.